we're very excited to see what the future is going to bring for this project. This hasn't been done in a hundred years. Malo wearing went out very early because of pressure from the missionaries. They didn't want to see men wearing malo. In some of the performances, like at the Mary Monarch and the Maui Arts and Cultural Center, where we made kapa for performances, we've had such a hard time making wearable kapa. We've had issues with tearing and, and not to the strength that, that we know was historic because people wore kapa every day, and we're still learning this process. There are three known varieties of wauke. This particular one that we're making the malo out of is wauke nui, and the growing of this particular type also disappeared because it's used for making pau and malo. And when those stopped being worn, the plant wasn't as cultivated. My Ma'ave Hawaiian Fiber Arts students decided that we would cut down the whole patch that I had growing. Most of them have never made kapa before, and they just did an awesome job. So some of the malo we've made are very simple malo that are made just with one piece. We have a surfing malo, we have a gardening malo that are, and a number of other malo that are made in that way. And some of these other ones where we've taken um, two pieces and we've um, beaten them out and then we've beaten the two pieces together. This way makes it a little bit wider malo and it's a little bit more formal looking. When we get these malo through the practitioners, what we hope to get is the feedback. There's a lot of practical information that we just don't know yet uh, because we've never had this plant again in, in any quantity to be able to actually do this kind of research. So I chose to use the mai'a as the stamping and then these two mauna represents the peaks on Kaho'olawe. And then I so love Honokonaia Bay and that is what the bottom part represents. He celebrates Lono. Lono's color is white. Our kapa came out really white. It's very hard to get kapa to be really white, which is why we decided to keep it white and not put any design on it. And this yeah. is the tool that we use to groove it. We had to go down one by one, line by line. This is a surfing malo. We dyed this with noni. It may turn a little pink as the salt water hits it. This is shaped as a mountain for his farm of country. So we use kalo to make these moon shapes because a lot of the planning is determined by the moon. And then we did our band, which this signifies the rain. It has a Pico line that goes from Mauna to Mauna, just linking the past to the future. There's all different kinds of theories on how humans were made in Hawaiian stories. So one of them is that we came from the stars. And we dyed it a couple of times because first it was almost like a sage green. And then we re-dyed it and got some more blue. And the lines are a lion and that will represent the dirt. We have Kanaloa theme. This is a blue dye made from the uki uki berry. We have the ha uki uki design here. Sea urchin, another word for fana. I chose these designs at the bottom because it represents his cocoa. The black on the side is made out of coal ash and is coated in pilali, which is tree sap. The silver is made from coal ash as well, mixed with coconut water. And the floating designs throughout this model are representative of the Uli. It's symbolizing the cacao that he has, so he knows the name yeah. of these. So it's kind of like it's something for him to know. So he carved this. So I tried to replicate that part of the hair that he carved out of stone on here, and the triangle because he's such a strong, strong kane. Kukunahora uh, means the wind spring and right here you see a little white popping out. This wasn't planned, but it just happened, so we decided to keep it, and we thought it replicates the springs. 